My skin literally feels like it's burning on my face. Awesome. What's going on guys? No, no, just checking in. Wanted to update you guys on my benzo taper. My taper off of clonopin, the generic name being clonazepam. The class of drugs is uh, benzodiazepines, which include Valium. I can't think all of a sudden. Xanax, Ativan. These drugs are incredibly effective for treating acute symptoms of anxiety. I believe they have some efficacy in the world of epilepsy. And they're kind of, they were kind of like a miracle drug when I found them. I have a history of depression and anxiety. My doctor let me try clonopin a few months ago and I had like a miracle response to it. And I thought I could take it a few days a week without it being a big deal, without developing any physical dependence, but I was wrong. And I did develop physical dependence and I found out by not drinking and or using clonopin for four days a couple months ago. Voila, my face started burning. I started to have increased anxiety, tightness in my chest, fog in my head, agitation. And I was like, great. I was mistaken in thinking that I could take a benzo a couple days a week, drink a couple days a week, and not create any physical dependence. That was ignorant of me. I've always been one of those people that has to learn things the hard way. I like to try to have my cake and eat it too. I'm stubborn that way. You know, I wanna do right by myself. I wanna make healthy choices for my mind, body, and soul, for my family. But I also like to walk that line, live a little bit on the edge, stuff like that. And I don't know if that's a rebellious, uh, childish part of me. I don't know if that's human nature, but it's not really what we're gonna discuss in this video. What I wanna discuss are a couple things. One, I was supposed to start my taper from 0.25 down to 1.125 uh, last Monday and I couldn't do it. And I'm gonna explain to you why I wasn't able to make that switch. I also wanna explain what happened after I did my last round of taper very quickly. So I already did an update video, but I wanna just sort of bring you up to speed to give context to what I'm gonna say. One of the main symptoms I was experiencing and I continue to experience is this burning feeling in my skin. Literally like my skin is burning. Back of my head, behind my eyes, it's very upsetting, alarming, uh, anxiety provoking and then I have tightness in the chest and the brain fog. And so when I made my first cut from what would have been roughly 0.4 per day, 0.5 per day, but I wasn't necessarily taking clonopin every day, I was drinking some days, taking clonopin other days. But, um, but when I decided to do the taper, we broke it into a smaller dose daily. What would have been 0.5 was cut to 0.25 a day. And the goal was to be on that for a month. And in the first two weeks, I had an increase in certain symptoms. The most alarming was the burning feeling which I keep bringing up because it's fucking freaky. But then it, it did subside. And you know, in that time, in those first couple of weeks, my drinking cut down significantly, which was an appropriate response by me to, to cut that back because I understood now that there is a relationship between alcohol and clonopin. I didn't want to have to cut it all the way out whilst coming off the clonopin. I didn't think it was necessary. And I will say that when my symptoms got better after a couple of weeks into the first round of my taper, I was like, cool, I'm like I can party a little bit more if the situation arises. That was a mistake because last week I partied a couple times, real heavy, uh, Saturday night in particular. And this whole week I've been dealing with like a relapse in tapering symptoms and, and withdrawal symptoms rather from the clonopin, which I was like, the fuck? Like I understood, you know, I've been learning, trying to learn very slowly that clonopin and alcohol affect GABA, but I thought they affected different parts of your GABA receptors and I really didn't think, for example, uh, drinking really heavily would bring back withdrawal symptoms that had already subsided. I was mistaken because I was supposed to start my last round of taper and come this last Monday, my skin's burning on my face behind my eyes, my anxiety's super tight, or super high, my chest is super tight, and I feel the burning feeling in my head and I'm like, no, fuck no. And I assume by, by, you know, that within a day or two it just instantly go away because I'd already went through this for a couple weeks, but I was wrong. Someone smarter than me, please explain how that works or why that is. Why does alcohol bring back symptoms of withdrawal? I told myself this week, okay, like, you know, cause and effect. I can grow, I can adapt, I can learn. I'm not going to do much drinking, if any drinking at all. You know, I'm one of those people, if I'm in pain, I'll respond very quickly, very aggressively. But if I'm not really in pain, I'm kind of like a dick and I'll just be like, yeah, let me see what I can get away with. And I'm not saying it's healthy, it's just what I do. And so, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were kind of shitty. And then Wednesday, I was like, okay, I'll just have a few beers. I brought home a six pack. Didn't have work on Thursday, kicked it, drank a six pack. And then these last couple days, again, like uh, another major flare up in these withdrawal symptoms. So now I'm like, shit, like, okay, no more cake and eating it too. Here's a bed, I made it, now I have to lay in it or whatever the expression is. Like, I'm gonna have to be more careful here. This is a little more real than I was hoping. 
And I keep asking myself, what did I do up there? Like, what's happening in my head? And now I'm a little bit spooked. I mean, I was spooked before, but when I started to, you know, get through those initial withdrawal symptoms, I was like, okay, I got this. Now I've been reading horror stories. On, I, I think I'm sold. It took me a while, but I'm sold now. This shit's scary. It's uncomfortable. I didn't mean to get here. And it's got me reflecting. You're like, man, I mean, I prioritize, damn it. Like, what matters to you? Mental health matters to me, but sometimes I go against it. And I justify it by doing so many other things that are great for my mental health. But uh, I will be starting the next round of my taper on Monday. 0.125, and I'm nervous about it. And I hope over these next three or four days, some of this burning, hot feeling starts to die down. And we start this next round and get through it as quickly as possible. If, if you want to say I told you so, I guess that's fine. It doesn't necessarily help anything, uh, but I'd rather you share your experience. I'd rather you share uh, mistakes you've made. I'm sharing the mistakes I'm making. I'm sharing the things I'm doing well. I mean, things I'm doing well is that I'm on top of my sleep schedule. I'm eating like a saint. I'm working out like crazy. I'm meditating and I have cut back my drinking significantly. But what I'm understanding now is I might have to cut it off completely. I need to make sure I'm not creating some sort of wormhole here for my brain. And I'm just, I'm learning that as I go. But what are you doing that's working, what's not working? Uh, what was your experience? What are you taking? How much are you taking? What's your schedule? If you understand the relationship between alcohol and benzos and why you can't do one while doing the other, you can't taper and drink even a little bit. I've heard some people, I've read some things, people saying like, you can't even have one. You can't even have one beer. And I'm just like, why? And if that's really the case, then so be it. I just wanna learn more about it. So that's the update. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your guys' uh, time. We will see you in the next video. Yeah, mm. good times. Take care guys.